Hi, welcome back. Well, the big trading move this morning has come in the PSU banks and Bank of Baroda is your big gainer, up 13% after the inclusion of Ravi Venkatesan as the non-executive chairman and PS Jaykumar as the MD and CEO of Bank of Baroda. So new private sector faces in the public sector banks. But CNBC TV 18, Shireen Bhan spoke exclusively to Minister of State for Finance, Jayan Sinha. He revealed that the new National Investment and Infrastructure Fund or the NIIF will be used to tackle the NP problems in the PSU banks. Take a look. You have to recognize that in other parts of the world when they've dealt with NPAs, uh, there have been specific vehicles that have been created, uh, whether it is a resolution trust yes. corp, whether it is a TARP-like facility, whether it's an ARC, people have created specific mm. vehicles to deal with stressed assets. We are open to that. We are exploring that with the National Investment Fund and it was explicitly set up to have that flexibility. Yeah. We do have an opportunity to create funds, either general purpose funds or specific funds that are related to specific industries, for example, in power, okay. where, as I was saying earlier, that new equity can come to the table. All right, that was uh, Jain Sena who spoke exclusively to Shireen Bhan uh, after Friday's uh, massive press conference where the entire North Bloc addressed the issue of banking reforms. Uh, uh, let's get someone who is best placed to perhaps judge these reforms. Joining us is Arundhati Bhattacharya, Chairman of State Bank of India. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you very much for spending time for us. Uh, well, I, I hope you remember everything that was said on Friday. We played out a small bit for you from Jayan Sinha. What stood out for you among all the announcements that were made as part of that Indra Dhanush on Friday? I would say that, uh, you know, the idea that uh, they would have the uh, banking bureau up by 1st of April, that's something that's uh, very heartening. Uh, secondly, I would say also that, uh, you know, uh, the fact that uh, the government is now very clear regarding uh, the need to give capital uh, so that the banks uh, can look at growth going forward. Uh, so I think these two things, of course, you know, the HR initiatives, they are also very important because at the end of the day, you need to be able to incentivize good work and disincentivize bad work. So both ways it's very important and if that is not there, then you obviously have indifferent performance. So I think that was also something that was very good. Okay, so uh, the Banking Bureau will be ready by the 1st of April, so that's a big positive. But they've also announced that ESOPs and performance linked incentives will be considered. You see that as a game changer? Actually, you know, uh, why that didn't stand out so much for me is because these things are being discussed quite a bit uh, within the industry. Uh, our bank board, in fact, has already um, uh, passed an uh, ESOP uh, program, and uh, this program is with the government at this point of time. Uh, in that, we intend to cover people from the scale of scale 5 upwards. Uh, that is the uh, plan as of now. And uh, we have worked on it uh, for quite a long period of time. The bank board has gone through it. The compensation committee has had a look at it. I think the central government has also uh, circulated it to both RBI and the IBA and sought comments on it. Uh, so this is something that we've been working on consistently for the past few months. Uh, as of now, what happens is you are allowed to give 1% of the profit uh, to 25% of your best performing staff. But as of now, you don't really have any forced bell curving or any other such methodology of, um, of um, performance uh, measurement. Uh, now, this again is a very large project that we are doing in State Bank, where we are trying to very closely link performance with the kind of rewards you get. And the rewards need not only be incentives, it can also be in, uh, say, things like postings. Of course, promotions, even now they are linked, but it can be postings, it can be extensions, it can be um, uh, both cash and non-cash incentives. Uh, so, you know, there is a whole new way that we are looking at performance measurements, and we are trying to use quite a bit of technology. And uh, the, in view of this, you know, uh, our people would actually be able to know within the month as to um, how they have done. We have also uh, created cohorts that is similarly placed people. For instance, you know, we have branches all across the country. 
Now, a branch manager, say, in a place like Ganjam, he cannot be compared with a branch manager in Metro Bangalore. Uh, he can be compared with, say, a branch manager in Purnia. So, you know, we have created cohorts so that our people come to know that within the cohort, uh, in, in which per, uh, percentile his um, performance is uh, uh, appearing. So they also will know how much better they need to do or whether they are doing well already. Now, these are sort of things that we are already working on, and we have been discussing with the government on these matters. The SOI targets, again, the government has extensively um, uh, consulted IBA as well as individual banks. So we knew that, you know, they have been working quite steadily on these matters. So uh, well, what is your sense of the performance incentives that were announced? Uh, how are they going to be different? Are they going to cover a larger part of the top management? What is the sense you got? See, we have already made some recommendations. Now, what they will be able to do is uh, something that I'm not really aware of. Uh, but our recommendations are already with them. Okay, fair enough. The KPIs or the performance indicators are not going to be just top line targets, but profitability targets as well, like, you know, ROAs, ROEs, etc. Will that materially change the way PSU bankers think? No, not really. You know, unlike what you all have information on, uh, actually the top line growth has been given up about three, four years back during Mr. Mittal's time. Uh, at that point itself, you know, top-line growth was taken off. What was uh, more emphasized upon were things like CASA, uh, which obviously, you know, has a bearing on your cost of funds. And I think, uh, as I told you, this SOI uh, refinement of these, the government came with its own suggestions, but they have been uh, having holding consultations with both IBA and with the banks. And therefore, I think, you know, this is something that we knew, and we, are, uh, we welcome it. Uh, we also have been saying that there is no point in uh, asking only for top line when uh, you really should be looking at efficiency parameters. And I think uh, this is absolutely in line with that. Okay. But I was under the impression this is the first time they have put in the profitability parameters, not the first time ROE, ROE. No, I think, you know, ROE, ROE was there in last year as well. If I remember correctly, it was already there. Okay, maybe for SBI, ma'am, but most of the public sector bankers didn't, other public sector bankers didn't say so. Okay, so your point is that the new KPIs uh, uh, will not make a very big difference. No, I don't really think it's going to make a huge amount of difference because I think the way it's going to work is not that they will stipulate a particular number, but they will probably stipulate a percentage of improvement over a base number. You know, we cannot always say that, you know, today if your uh, ROA is at, say, 0.67, tomorrow it should be 1.5. It won't happen. What you can say is on 0.67, we would like to see an improvement of, say, 15 basis points or 15 percent or 25 percent. So, you know, you will put a percentage over and above what you already have. And I think that's fair means when you are looking at uh, working in a particular place, you obviously have to ensure that it does better. And therefore, you know, if you're given a base and then given a certain percentage by which you are required to improve, it's perfectly uh, fair. Yeah, I guess uh, on ROA they have heard, but on ROE the increase they are demanding is 300 basis points and some bankers were a bit worried about that, ma'am. Okay, uh, let me come to the other thing which uh, Jain Sinha said. Uh, he said that part of the NIIF money will be used to create something like a top uh, troubled assets relief uh, structure and uh, uh, maybe that fund or it will be used to create a fund that will invest in last mile projects uh, that are unfinished because they don't have equity. Is this looking like a big help that will reduce NPLs? Uh, you are already aware, I think, that the government is thinking of, uh, of putting in seed money to the extent of 20,000 crores uh, for a national infrastructure agency. And obviously the idea is that uh, with that seed capital, they will go around and uh, be able to raise money. Uh, we have been uh, uh, telling the government that in many of the projects, the last mile equity is a problem. And you often find that when a project is stuck, say, at the 68-70% completion stage, there is very little appetite uh, of uh, fresh equity coming in. However, when a project crosses the 85% uh, mark, 
uh, very often that project uh, begins to see a lot of interest. So basically, you know, to get them from the 65 to the 85, if there is a lack of equity, then it really is a major challenge. In some places, we ourselves are ensuring that some priority debt comes in so that it can still act as a quasi-equity and get the project towards more towards the completion phase. Now, these are the kinds of things where, you know, if you have this fund, then the fund can probably invest, come in as a strategic investor, uh, where a stake sale could be done to it, and they could be in a position uh, to reap the benefits when the project gets completed. So yes, there is thinking on this, but again, having said this, I don't think uh, the scale and reach of TARP was huge. And I'm not too sure that, you know, that kind of a scale and reach is possible in a resource-starved country like India. Okay. Uh, so are you confident that this entire Indra Dhanush program can be transformational in any way? Or are they just a good, you know, first step and a lot more needs to be done in your mind? Yes, th these are again, I would like to characterize them as first steps. Uh, I don't think anything is enough. You know, uh, it's very difficult for me to say that this is enough. But these are very good first steps. And I'm sure you know that uh, there will be much more to come. All right, we live in that hope, ma'am. Thank you very much uh, for finding time for us. I realize it's a very busy scale. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, uh, clearly the banker is not estimating the steps as enthusiastically as the market is. I mean, look at that, Bank of Baroda, 13% higher, Canada, 7%, Bank of India, almost 7%, Union Bank, 5.2%. Uh, I think the, uh, we didn't see any enthusiastic objectives uh, from uh, no. State Bank. But there are two things. State Bank is uh, uh, governed under a different act. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the State Bank Act tends to give them a little more uh, uh, freedom and a little more ability to be professional than other banks. But uh, more importantly, my sense is that the, the market is not giving this 21-gun salute because it expects NPLs to fall. Because if that was the case, ICICI wouldn't be where it is. Yes. You know, you would see the Yes banks and the ICIs also participate. They are all exposed to the economy access uh, as well. If they are giving a, a salute to Bank of Baroda and Bank of India, I think it is to what you said, you know, permanence of leadership. Yes. Uh, th these banks have struggled for too long without good leadership or even any permanence to the existing leadership. The fact that uh, some good men have been appointed, you know, G. Padmanabha and Javi Venkateshan, one assumes, you know, these people bring corporate governance, definitely. Yes. I don't think Padmanabha will allow nonsense. Yes. Uh, he's been an ED and uh, a fierce one at that at the RBI for too long. These guys coming in as chairman of banks is what I think uh, the uh, market is applauding. And is Not this the very any... first time that uh, a private sector, uh, you know, individual is being hired for PSU Bank? Yeah, so has it I'm... happened in the past? No, I don't think. I can't so remember any that, instance. So uh, perhaps that uh, surprise... Yeah, that is, I well think, giving it too much, uh, too much of a... Uh, I think in Bank of Baroda's case, the very fact that one year that bank has struggled, had had no uh, one year and a little more, yeah. they have struggled without uh, permanent uh, leadership. Yeah is uh, itself being reversed and that may be a, a fundamental reason. Just anyone else coming would have given them maybe 7-8% more and probably expectations that private sector bank uh, guys will come with a, a few more tricks in their, uh, uh, up their sleeve is giving them that extra mileage.